Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the blower wheel on your dryer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the dryer. So either pull it far enough forward that you can unplug it, or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuses. Now there are a couple of methods to replace that blower wheel. You may attempt to do it by just removing the lower access panel, but it is much more difficult to do it that way. So we suggest that you pull the dryer far enough forward that you can access the mounting screws to the main top, pick the top off the front door bulkhead, lower access panel, and pull the drum out, and we can do the repair much easier that way. Now next we'll remove this lower access panel, and we've temporarily tilted this dryer up just to give you a better visual of where the screws are located. Well, it's not necessarily to do that at home, but it makes it easier for us to show you. Okay, we'll remove some quarter inch hex head screws. And let that panel slide down, and we can lift it away and set it aside. Now, as part of this disassembly, we'll also be removing two screws at the bottom of that front panel bulkhead assembly. We'll also need to remove two screws that secure this blower housing cover to the actual blower housing. And we'll need to disconnect this harness connector to the dryer sensors located on that bulkhead. So we'll start with that. We'll take a flat blade screwdriver and we're going to release these little locking tabs on either side of that connector. Take a small flat blade, and just slide it in. We're going to just stretch that plastic a bit on both sides. And separate the connector. Then we'll remove the four screws that secure that blower housing cover to the actual blower housing. And take note that normally these are a gold colored screw about an inch long that are used onto that blower housing. The one that is located up in this upper left hand corner can be a little difficult to access and you may need an extension for your nut driver. We'll also go ahead and remove these two screws at the bottom of that front panel assembly. Now I'm gonna stand that dryer up and we'll go to the top to remove the console and the front panel. Now if your model has little plastic clips across the back of that control panel, you simply need to lift up on those to disengage them. If it doesn't, you'll need to remove this metal frame that that console is attached to. To do so, we'll begin by removing this panel along the side. It secures the control board. Just remove those three screws. We're going to put that panel aside. And we'll also expose some wire harnesses that we need to disconnect. So we'll begin by disconnecting the door switch connector. Again, it has locking tabs on both sides of that connector. So we wanna just spread that apart slightly with a flat blade screwdriver. There are also two connectors here that attach to that control board that feed back into our user interface board. Simply grasp those connectors with a little release tab on the back side of them. You press that release tab, pull the connector off. And there is one more connector here, four wires attached to it that needs to be removed. Simply pull that off. There's a little locking tab and you may be able to reach in and push down on that, but normally you can just pull that straight away. With the connectors released, we can set that control board panel aside. Then we're going to remove two quarter inch hex head screws, one on either side of that console. 
Now with the two mounting screws removed from either corner, we're next going to just pull out slightly on the bottom edge of that control panel while lifting up on it. There are four plastic tabs, two on either side of the center that engage with the front panel and we need to release those. And just lift it straight up and remove it. This metal frame has two tabs on either side that slide down into that gap for the lip across the front edge of that front panel. We're just going to set this aside. Now next we'll open up that dryer door and just remove that lint filter and when we do so that cover may drop off. So we'll set that cover and the lint filter aside. Then there are two more screws that secure that front bulkhead and panel to the cabinet. There are keyhole slots, so we simply need to loosen those screws a few turns. And we're just going to lift up on that panel. Once we released it from those two screws, we can drop it down enough so that it pulls out underneath the dryer drum. The two drum rollers will catch on that drum, so we need to lower that down to clear those. And we'll set this aside temporarily. Now with this style of a dryer, we have a ribbed belt, ribs on one side, flat on the other. The rib side will go on the motor pulley and up against the face of the drum. So essentially, this is what the belt will look like when it's in position with the drum in the middle. So to release it, we would simply pull back on that spring, release enough tension on that belt that we can slide it off the motor pulley and drop it down out of the way. Now to remove the dryer drum, we first of all need to release tension on that belt. There is an idler located at the back of the drive motor. And that puts tension on that belt. So reaching in on the left hand side, just locate the drum belt and you'll feel the idler pulley. We pull that pulley towards the left. There's some spring tension that holds that in place. over far enough that you can slide the belt off of the motor pulley. And then make sure it's not wrapped around the idler or the belt switch. And you should have about, oh, about 10 inches of clearance above that drum, which would indicate that the belt is free of any foreign objects underneath. drum off of the rear drum rollers and then we can pull it out through the opening. And we'll just set that aside. Now to remove the blower wheel from the motor itself, we're going to use a half inch drive socket extension. We'll fit it into that opening in the hub of the blower wheel. We'll also use a 11 millimeter or 7 16 wrench on the motor shaft in behind, and then we'll turn that blower wheel clockwise to loosen it. There should be some arrows on the face of that blower wheel to indicate which direction to turn it, to tighten it, and to loosen it. Now if the opening or square opening in this hub of that blower wheel is not destroyed, you should be able to slide the square end of a half inch 
extension into that opening nice and snug. And if we look at the motor shaft just in behind that blower wheel housing, you'll see that there's a flat side on it. And just slide the wrench onto that shaft to make sure it's nice and tight. If not, you may even try an adjustable wrench in there and then allow that wrench to come down and hit on the motor bracket. And we'll rotate our ratchet around to a comfortable position. And the best method we found for breaking that blower wheel free from the motor shaft is to give it a sharp wrap with a soft faced hammer. Then we can turn that blower wheel clockwise. Pull it out through the opening. We'll inspect the motor shaft and show there's no damage on the end of the motor shaft and then we can reinstall our new blower wheel. And again, you'll note it'll tell you which direction to tighten it or remove it. Line it up on the motor shaft. Tighten it by hand. Then we'll rotate that wrench until it contacts the screw through the blower housing. And then we'll use the same method that we use to release the blower. We'll fit that square inch drive extension into the center of the blower wheel and then give it a sharp wrap with a hammer just to tighten. And now we're ready to reassemble the dryer. So the first step in reassembling the dryer is to put the drum back in. So start by draping that belt around the drum to make sure that the groove side of the belt is against the drum. And we'll use that to support the weight of the drum as we push it inside the cabinet. You may need to spread the edges of that cabinet just enough to get it through the opening. Then we're gonna set that back edge of the drum on top of the drum roller. So again, keep some tension on the belt so that it doesn't get caught on either the either or motor shaft. And then make sure it sits firmly on those rear drum rollers. And then release the tension on that belt. Then we'll reach in from the front. We'll pull that belt around from the right hand side over top of the either pulley, make a loop in it, and then hook that loop around the motor pulley. When reinstalling it, we have the drum in place, and of course we can't see anything here, but we'll take that belt, we'll roll it across the top of the either pulley, down across the right hand side, pull it over by stretching that spring. We'll get enough length in that belt that we can wrap it around the motor pulley, and then allow the spring tension to tighten it. So we've taken that belt and we've tucked it in underneath the either pulley, made a loop. We'll grab that loop with our left hand. We're gonna force the either pulley over to the left by stretching the spring, wrap that loop around the motor pulley. And then just by feel, make sure that the belt is in the proper position. We can then take that drum and rotate it, and we should see the motor turn at the same time. We just give it a few turns. And you'll see that belt will track just slightly back of center, and there'll be some marks from where it was before, and it should line up with those. So now we're ready to put the front panel back on. Now when installing the front panel, we want to make sure that we engage both drum rollers in underneath the edge 
of that drum. So you put the right hand one in underneath first, then you can lift up on that drum, position the other one in place, then we'll lift that whole front panel assembly up and we'll hang those keyhole slots on the two mounting screws. Now with those in place, we can tighten the two top screws. And now we'll go to the bottom. We'll reattach the two screws for the front panel and then reassemble the blower housing cover. So first we'll secure the bottom of that front panel to the cabinet. Reconnect the harness for the sensor bars. Make sure it's firmly inserted and the locking tabs engaged. We'll then take the lower housing cover and we want to line up the top end of it, the opening for the outlet grill. Install the retaining screws. And with that secure, we can then go ahead and put the bottom access panel on. Make sure that we tuck that lip up in behind the front panel. And secure it with the two screws on the bottom. Now we'll set that dryer back down in place. We'll reinstall our leak filter. And now we're ready to put the console back in place. Now when installing that console or control panel, we need to make sure of a couple things. First, there are these offset tabs on either end of that mounting support. They need to fit down through that slot between the top and the front of the cabinet. The bottom edge of this metal bracket needs to fit into these little metal clips. And the four plastic tabs on the control panel need to engage with the four hooks on top of the front panel. So while looking at it from the back, make sure that that metal panel slides into those little clips, press it down into place, and then we can pump the bottom of it in to engage those plastic tabs. Now we're ready to reconnect the harness to the control board and attach all of the retaining screws. Take the two multi-wire harnesses, line them up with the connectors, to make sure they're firmly pressed into place, and that the locking tabs engage. Large harness to the back. Again, make sure that locking tab engages. And the door switch harness, again, make sure that it's connected firmly. And then we'll position that panel.
And now we're ready to install the screws. Now we're ready to put the main top on and we'll secure it from the back. Now when reinstalling this top, we want to make sure that these two tabs at the front will slide in there that plastic catch at the front of the washer. So we're going to set it down a half to three quarters of an inch gap from the console and the main top. Make sure it's laying flush. Simply push it forward. Make sure both front corners are engaged and then we'll install the screws in the back. Now with the top secure, we can now push the washer back into position. We'll reconnect any water hoses that we may have disconnected as well as the drain hose. We're now ready to push the dryer back into place, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.